favor on us, blessings on us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with His fadl, His grace and mercy. He gives us tawfiq normally to do His dhikr, but today on this night of Jumu'ah that Allah ta'ala is giving us this special tawfiq opportunity, this is a great reward of Allah, great reward, because this is Dhul Hijjah, the month of Dhul Hijjah, and the whole month is blessed of Dhul Hijjah, especially the first 10 days that Allah Ta'ala has given to us, they are afdal, they are great. And a, a, a very, uh, you can say, important factor that we need to understand that these are great days and nights. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has explained to us the greatness, the virtues of these first 10 days and nights. That these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the, the amount of days that are here, that we have in front of us, we compare to the rest of the year the number of days that for Allah these first 10 days of the Lajah are more greater and better than the days of the rest of the year. So obvious if the days are great then the actions that are implemented during this time the du'as, tawbah, sadaqat, all of the things that we do etc. So the first thing here we need to understand is that we need to understand this point that these 10 days are unique and we should spend these 10 days in a good way, proper way, avoid uh, wrong things. And just like we know that these are great days, then we should try in this time, in these 10 days, that do as much as we can. Obviously we implement the faraid, the compulsory deeds in a nice way. We should pray all salah in jama'ah, in congregation, in the masjid. Um, and the other actions, nawafil, voluntary actions, we should try to implement those as well. And we should we should try to implement all other good deeds. We should try to give sadaqat. We should implement other good deeds. So we should need to think and tread carefully in these ten days and do good deeds in these 10 days and in these 10 days we should leave the sins we should always leave the sins but we need to try our best that we don't implement actions which are sinful control our tongue control our eyesight control our gaze control our body and we should try our best that these 10 days we are going to leave the kharafat and the sinful actions because these uh, days, if we commit sins, then this will be the source of Allah's displeasure. That in these days, these days that are great for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather is stated in a hadith that in these days or in the nights, whichever ibadah is performed, worship is performed, Allah ta'ala prefers and holds beloved the actions in these 10 days more than the rest of the year. So there's so much for dhila. So many virtues in these 10 days and in these 10 days, in these moments, in these days, if we utilize the time in the wrong way, if we commit sins or disobey Allah, then it is extremely sad. In these 10 days, we need to control ourselves, control our nafs, our desires and save ourselves and avoid sins not from our tongue or eyes or hands or body. No sin should be implemented by the human being. Just like in Ramadan, we keep the fast, alhamdulillah. Then consider these 10 days we have to pass in the same way. That we have to control ourselves, not commit any sins. And this is a great reward that Allah Ta'ala set aside. And it's been explained about the greatness. That in the nights of these first 10 days of Dhul Hajj and in the days Allah Ta'ala has put a lot of thawab. That if in a night a person does ibadah in the nights, in these nights... 
worship, then he gets the reward as if he's done ibadah the whole year. So we should try to make a habit that pray tahajjud in the morning. And now obviously our mind has been made and the mentally we are ready. We should try that in these 10 days, we need to control the desires, crush the desires. There's no guarantee about life. Maybe in these 10 days, Allah will give us forgiveness. The rest of the year, we can't do this. We, we don't try hard or etc. But in these 10 days, we can compensate for that loss. We can try harder, do ibadah in the night. There should be some worship in the night. Allah Ta'ala says that in this, there is a lot of thawab and reward that I give to my servant. What a big thawab that you get the thawab as if you've worshipped the whole year. And if during the day a person keeps a fast during these 10 days, then it's the thawab of fasting the whole year. So Allah Ta'ala give us a bit of determination and a bit of drive so that if we can be energetic and we have an opportunity, a person should put himself forward in these 10 days and he should try to worship and gain maximum reward. Rather there's a hadith, has a Shaykh al-Barakat, Rahmatullah alay, with the snap, Back to Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa radiyallahu anha has stated that in this night the individual, the person in these nights who does ibadah worships like we pray tahajjud or after isha we pray in a wife oh you've slept a little bit yes fine and then you worship and it's stated that the thawab the person will earn is as if a haji or a person who's gone for Hajj or Umrah, and he does ibadah in the Holy Lands. Obviously, that will be ibadah of ikhlas, and certainly when a person goes to Hajj or Umrah, the person is mentally prepared, the ibadah is special, the du'as are full of sincerity, the prayer, the recitation, the dhikr of Allah is full of khulus and sincerity. And obviously, that's a unique, different sort of condition. So if you compare to that, that the Hajji, and that person who goes on Umrah, the reward they get in front of Baytullah or sitting in Madinatul Manawara, then the ibadah, the thawab of the ibadah that person is doing, for that person who does ibadah in this night, then he will get it as if it's for the rest of the whole, that rest of that year, the same reward, multiplied. So a person needs to pay attention a bit towards the ibadah during the night, pray nawafil, pray tahajjud in these 10 days. What difference does it make? What difference will it make? So this is something that we need to pay attention to. And these are ayam days of barakat blessings. Two things we should do, ibadah and that do not earn Allah Ta'ala's displeasure. So that we can benefit maximum from these 10 days, maximum. And in these 10 days, the genuine thing that we need to focus on in the name of Dhul Hajjah, this is selected ibadah that Allah Ta'ala has kept in these 10 days, this worship of hajj. Hajj. And a person, if it's fard, he goes on hajj, and some people go on nafal hajj, voluntary hajj. And this is the genuine action to travel to Baytullah and to reach to Allah's home and to carry out the actions, alhamdulillah, from all four corners of the globe, of the world, all different people, different lands, countries, people are driving themselves forward to get to Allah's home and we've seen a little bit of travel, a person has a little bit of a distress, he sits back, he says, oh, I've got a problem an issue, I'm not going, but in this journey a person knows there'll be, I'll go there there'll be heat and thirst even if I don't get a place to lie down, don't know what hal they will be there, how much we'll have to wait, etc there are lots of phases in travel passport, give it in, wait, etc despite all of these tests, alhamdulillah the insane people, they push themselves forward, they're running there, they're hastening themselves towards Allah's home, towards Haram Sharif, towards Allah's house. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it like a magnet. The Baytullah, the house of Allah, has made it like a magnet. We see it in reality, that what magnets are presented, that people are running, hastening towards their, and their old people, young people, their children, those who are not going, they're crying. Those who wanted to go, and they can't go, there are some situations at home they cannot go, but they see a haji going, then the heart cries, and he's gone, and I'm left behind. And the person, I see the person going to Medina, the Musafir, and he's gone, and I'm left behind. And person feels in the heart that this person's going, if only I could go, it would have been nice, etc. So anyway, what we see here is that the heart of every mu'min is pulling, is being pulled towards Allah's home, just like a magnet pulls on the opposite 
um, force. So what is the pulling force that pulls on the Muslims towards the house of Allah? Hazrat Ibrahim salam was told by Allah that take uh, the materials and construct the house of Allah. And that's how we make houses today. With the stone or the bricks and the cement and the mortar. So Allah Ta'ala made his home like this as well. And the roof is like that as well. So what is it that Allah Ta'ala has instilled? The desire. There's a desire and a pull on the house of Allah. Three things Allah Ta'ala has done. And in reality, those, all those three are the bait Allah. Say subhanAllah. We are introduced to one. We know a lot the Kaaba, Baytullah, which we are aware about, the Baytullah, the house of Allah. But in reality, there are three. One is Baytul Mamur, which is in the heavens and the angels, mashallah, do tawaf around it in the same way. That is there. And what is Baytullah in Mecca, which we run towards and we pull towards, we're spending our money and mal and health and energy. Nobody goes just like that. But there's a pull from within that drags us there. Even the most sinful person, and the neck, the, not just that the pious people are going, even the people who are doing wrong actions in life, they go there with desire and intention and planning. He doesn't feel like I'm sinning. He says, Alhamdulillah, I'm going to Makkah, I'm going to Medina. And they go also to that place. And the third, they, they also go to the house of Allah. So if Baytul Mamur, Baytullah, and the third Kaaba is what? Subhanallah. The Qalbi Abdullah, the heart of the slave of Allah. In other words, the Qalb, the heart inside the believer, that is also like the Kaaba. Never forget, always it's going with us. I tell you this. So within all three, Allah Ta'ala has put one function. Allah has made all three a magnet. In the heavens, we have the angels who are swaying towards Baytul Mamur and they're happy. Here in the dunya, we are dragged and pulled towards the house of Allah. Baytullah. And the third Bayt, the house, is the heart of the person, which is the qalb of the mu'min and all three have the same quality same attribute and you get the same thing from all three what is that in all three you have a desire you have a pull so what we need to see what is the pull that Allah has inserted that what drags on the people that people go towards these three in the insan in the qalb there is also this quality of pulling on the individual what is that pull the tajalliyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala's tajalliyat they descend on the heart of a person Allah's rahmah mercy and where's Allah Ta'ala made this? Allah Ta'ala has had this, made this effect in the heart of the believer. Subhanallah. So when this tajalli comes on the heart of the person, then subhanallah, the, the humanity, the person of the man, then he is dragged towards humanity and good actions. And if Allah Ta'ala said that every year it's fard on you, I would have yaqeen that everybody would go to happiness. It's not even fard now, and people are going regularly. Isn't it on hajjis? Fard. It's, and it's going to be, even if it wasn't fard, they would still go. So much love, people are running towards the house of Allah. So this is the sign of love. Allah Ta'ala said, once you have to go on hajj, but even then, you cannot get the ticket to purchase to go on hajj. And there are people who are going, who are doing nafil, voluntary hajj. So there's a pull on the house of Allah. And Baytul Mamur is the same way. In the qalb of the mu'min, the heart of the believer, Allah Ta'ala has inserted the tajalli zat inside the heart of the mu'min. Subhanallah. But what is the situation? Is that just like Baytullah, that, for example, there were the idols and it was uh, surrounded by sinners. And then the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi came and he um, destroyed the idols. And he said, the haqq has come, the truth has come. And Batil has disappeared and he took out, expelled the idols. And then there was the blessed cloth put onto the Kaaba and the Kaaba was washed. And Zamzam water was there. And all of the mu'mineen, the believers of the world, started to travel towards the house of Allah to remember Allah. So the qalb of the mu'min, the heart of the believer is also like this. Remember this. The inside, what are we like? That just like the idols went into the Kaaba, in the same way the idols have come into our heart. At this moment, we have the same idols, the Kaaba that's inside us. Rather, this is the home the heart where we should feel the nearness, the closeness to Allah. But and, and in reality, the idols have come into the heart. And to get out the darkness from the heart, just like the Kaaba was washed, the Nabi came and he cleaned the Kaaba. In the same way, we need a Shaykh, a Kamil Shaykh who can wash the heart, purify the heart. And if a person puts his hand into the hand of the Kamil, true Shaykh, and so on, just like Nabi al Karim Sassam used to, uh, explained that the Kaaba was washed and purified in the same way from the experience and the company, the connection with the Sheikh, the idols of the nafs, etc., collapse from the heart and they expel from the heart. And then, just like the Kaaba is given a ghusl, it's washed just with zamzam. It's washed in the same way, there's the ghusl of the heart, there's a ghusl for the Kaaba of the heart. And for this heart, what is the zamzam? 
the cleaning agent, subhanallah, the tears of that person who cries and the tears that fall out of regret, they wash the heart of that person. This is the zamzam for the believer, subhanallah. So when a person does tawbah, repents subhanallah, when the tears come out from the eyes with regret, remorse, then they clean the heart, the tears clean the heart, just like zamzam cleans the kaaba and it sparkles the same way the tears clean the heart of a mu'min. Just like the kaaba has a cloth, in the same way there is a cloth that is put onto this heart. And what is that cloth? Blessed cloth, subhanallah. That cloth is the Qur'an. The cloth, the veil of the Qur'an. When the heart sparkles and is made, then the, the beautiful seal and the cover of the Qur'an is wrapped on that person's heart. And then he comes towards the orders of Allah. So this is a high grade status. And then comes the question that why are we pulled? That if we want to see how is a person pulled, then look towards the heart of a wali Allah and see how the world runs after the wali of Allah to benefit from the wali. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people became Muslim. We see this in Hindustan, the current day India. Many people, hundreds of thousands, Hazrat Khwaja Muhinuddin Jisti Ramda came from afar. And great sheikhs, we hear the stories of the pious predecessors that Muslims in the hundreds of thousands were made through the hand or the connection of one sheikh. If you don't hear me today, it wasn't the tongue that they had, rather they had the heart that was made and their heart was like a baytullah. It would drag on people and pull on people to come to the company to benefit. We thought that people came, became Muslims through, through speeches and beyond. No, their heart was so clean and pure, it became like the Kaaba. Just like the Kaaba today pulls on the human beings, the same way the Wali Allah, his heart calls a person away from kufr and sent towards the deen. Here I remember an event in the Maktuba, the great sheikh of the Naqshbandi Silsila, and all the mashayik are famous and pure, and everybody accepts, the whole dunya accepts his status. Every sheikh of every Silsila has a Mujaddad al rahmatullah alayhi. And he was a cyber sharia, example of the sharia of the sunnah, ajeeb, beautiful, great, unique sheikh Allah Ta'ala sent to the world. And his title was Mujaddad al the revival of the deen after a thousand, a thousand years. And if he experienced kashf, then we see that his kashf was full of haq. The question didn't arise that his kashf was wrong. Rather his vision, his kashf was such that it was for our tarbiyah, for our rectification. So once he was sat, he was a maraqib in the morning time. What did he see? He was in Marakaba and he saw the whole dunya was submitting towards him, just like they submit uh, to the Kaaba now, uh, to the house of Allah. So the whole dunya he saw that was submitting towards him, just like Tawaf was, is happening today. The same way people were uh, pointing towards him and recognize him. In the same way the whole dunya is like this in front of our heart. It's nothing. It doesn't even hold any value. Because Allah Ta'ala said that the mu'min's heart is so strong, so powerful. Allah Ta'ala said that if I... It can be remembered and I can be remembered in the heart of the mu'min, nowhere, nowhere else. So what will be the, the power of the mu'min's heart? So when he saw that there was submission, that there was acceptance of his status by the people of the world, that all of the people of the world were focused on him, just like people do tawaf and the Kaaba, and there were people going around him, focused on him. So in the kashf, he turned to Allah, he said, Allah, what is it that I'm experiencing? That I see that the whole of the people of the world, all of them are focused on me, accepting me, recognizing me. Just like he said, it's like the world is revolving around me. And then the, the announcement came from the unseen uh, place that Allah Ta'ala said, that Mujaddad, that that is also the Kaaba and your heart has become like the Kaaba. Like the Haswala. There I call people to the Kaaba for Hajj. Allah Ta'ala said, from your heart, what are you seeing? That people are submitting to you, accepting you, that through your heart, the heart of the mu'min, Allah says, I am doing tabliq and spreading the deen, and your affairs will reach to the whole of the world, and people will benefit from you. So this is the heart of the insan. If we see this now, if we think, if I think, you think, we are human beings, and in our heart we have that same, same heart, same capacity. What is the value of our heart? Of our lives. So this is also a big lesson of Dhul Hijjah that uh, one of every year we do Hajj and there are lessons every year that teach us that look into your heart, delve into your heart. Allah Ta'ala has created a quality, an attribute in your heart that purify your heart from the desires and nafs and control your heart in these days. Isn't this something to think about, my friends, or not? So purify your heart. Allah Ta'ala has given us guidance for the purification. Allah says, My dhikr is a great action. Correction, spend time, think that this is the magnet, my heart, which is pulling on the good deeds. So why am I pulled towards bad? Why doesn't my heart 
pull me towards good deeds. What is the attribute condition with me of hypocrisy, impurity, or I say bad things, or I do wrong actions, or from morning till evening I say bad things. But Allah Ta'ala has put the quality of the Kaaba within us. If May Allah Ta'ala protect or save us. If we go to the Kaaba, will we do a bad action? If we, will we say something bad to somebody? The dunya, the people around us say, what kind of person is this? That he's swearing here and doing dirty and pure actions here. So in the same way, the angels, morning and evening, they send curse on us. That look, Allah Ta'ala has put into your heart the Kaaba, Baytullah is present there. And Allah Ta'ala is the Jaliyata descending and you are doing sins on top of this. And you got bad actions, Allah Ta'ala, the angels say, that he has dropped and stooped so much this person. That just like when we see the Kaaba, we say to somebody, if there is disrespectful in that vicinity, then the same way the angels see us and they see us sinning. The angels are shocked, dismayed, that how sad, how bad. So this is a point, my friends, Allah Ta'ala has given us the Kaaba. And alongside this, Allah Ta'ala has given us a great, great opportunity and moments that Allah Ta'ala calls us to him. Why does Allah call us to him? Why? That we are going towards Allah, we're traveling towards Allah. In reality, the Hajjis, they are going on an invitation. An invitation is being given to the Hajjis to come. Nobody can go of his own accord. Nobody. Remember this. So whose invitation is Allah's invitation? And nobody can go himself. Let me tell you this. That how can a person go on his own? That I've seen myself, that person who doesn't have the strength to walk, he, come, he arrives to Hajj. First class Hajj is doing. We think, oh, he has to go to a doctor, diagnosis, injection. And he's preparing for Hajj and he's gone, he's doing tawaf around the Kaaba. And we're dismayed and shocked and surprised. Such people who have no money. I've seen this with my own eyes, I've experienced this. That the person, the people have money, they sit, they don't go. And the person who has no money, he reaches to the house of Allah. He arrives at the Kamal. The benefit here is that that person, he makes intention and he goes on Hajj and he arrives. And Allah Ta'ala says, I will prepare for you. He says, I don't have money for chai. When he multiplies by the currency of Pakistan, India, he sees that one cup of tea costs 10 rupees or 15 rupees. So the poor soul, the poor man, he can't drink tea. So he goes and sits next to Starbucks. He's waiting and then Allah Ta'ala makes the food arrive into his lap. And the dastakhwan, the food mats are laid outside. He eats such food he couldn't even imagine in normal days he would eat. And Allah Ta'ala prepares. So what is the reason for this? The reason for this is that Allah Ta'ala sent an invitation. And when did this occur? Allah Ta'ala gave the invitation himself at that time. Subhanallah, look here. Let's understand this point. That when there was just wilderness and jungle, nothing, desert, sand, and nothing else in wilderness, Allah Ta'ala wanted to make this place occupy the holy land of Makkah. So first and foremost, Hazrat Hajra, uh, the wife, she was instructed to leave this place and go to a certain place. Was there no house, no land, nothing? So go to such a place you have to reach there, arrive there. When you go there, it's totally jungle, wilderness, one or two mountains maybe, and then it's dry and no water. And they were left there in the wilderness. This is Mecca. And she, uh, the blessed wife Hazrat Hajra, said that, My husband, you're leaving me with a child. Are you upset with me? Why is it you're leaving? No answer. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam gave no answer. And she's running after her husband. Where are you leaving us? Who will ask us for any help here, assistance that we need? Who will ask after us? And Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't give any answer. And she said, Please just give me one answer. That's it. That you are going. You're departing. That is this with your choice or with Allah's choice? What action you doing? Just tell me this. Just tell me this at least. Then Hazrat Ibrahim said, This is due to the preference of Allah. Then what was the answer? Hazrat Hajra. So the first answer she gave, Subhanallah, that came to the tip of her tongue. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. So she said, Fine, you're going, then go. And from now, I will not leave here for now. And we trust in Allah. So at that place and that time, Allah Ta'ala saw that how the house of Allah was made and Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam came and Hazrat Ismail Alayhi Salaam and uh, Allah Ta'ala instructed allow them some space so that they can construct, construct the building the house of Allah even then nobody's coming they stood there a few men two or three men they said Allah the house is being made what now the Allah said you should stand and call out call out to who Allah shall I call out who will listen to me and who will understand what I'm saying Allah Ta'ala's hukam that you just need to call out make the announcement what is the announcement just come, come, come towards the Kaaba, the house of Allah that you're running away from. Allah Ta'ala has given the hukam, the order. So then they said, Allah, what is this that the person, what will he do? How will he come here? What will be the action? Subhanallah. And Allah said, my Khalil, what do you know? It's your job to invite and my job to deliver the people to the end point. Today you are seeing that you stood on your own and there's nothing here. Then here what will occur is that... People one day, there will be so many people coming, they will go, not get a square inch to sit down. If you go in Itikaf in Ramadan, where the beds are laid out, the bedding, it's so hard to walk in that vicinity. How can we walk? So many people are sleeping, there's no space to walk. 
Subhanallah. And every morning we hear that the Kaaba is extending, extending, extension, Haram Sharif is extending. How much will it extend? And whenever we go, Haram Sharif is extending, extending, is opening, but we have the same amount of Russian people, and it's full. The masjid's full. Subhanallah. Why? So what we realize here is that the people who are coming, everyone's going and coming. This is what Allah Ta'ala has invited the people. Allah invited his khalil, that this is the invitation of hajj to you. And the haji is the guest of Allah. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. Me, if some guest comes to my home, I prepare for that guest. If a guest comes to your home, you prepare for the guest. So the, the guest of Allah, imagine how Allah Ta'ala is preparing to uh, receive them. So the haji, my brothers, he becomes a great individual after wearing the haram. And if he starts out on the journey, he becomes the guest of Allah. And if he makes a niyyah and he passes away, then even then he'll be straight into Jannah. And he will wake up with a haram reciting takbir. And the greatness of Allah. He won't just have a minor status. He is a VIP person, subhanallah. And it doesn't matter how sinful he is, but he is on a journey and he listens to Allah Ta'ala's call, then he becomes the, the guest of Allah. That woman, that man, every individual. They are the guests of Allah. Who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala tells us himself, there's a hadith, that the angels are called, they are gathered, and after calling the angels, Allah says with pride, that these many people, they are my special guests. These few hundred thousand people in the world, they are my special guests. They are my guests. And I am proud of these people. That I invited them and they listened to my invite and they've come. So listen, first and foremost, that people, for example, come. Then it's not, is it not the haq of the person who's the host to give to the guest? So Allah says, I am the host. And first and foremost, all these people who stood here, one million, two million. I will not differentiate who are these people, subhanAllah. Allah says, close to me, everyone's the same. Which village, which town, which city, who's good, who's bad, what does he do, she do, etc. Allah says, I know nothing. I consider these people are my guests, and those people have become my guests. Allah says them first and foremost. Allah Ta'ala says, I will host them nicely. That I will first, reward of my hosting is that I've forgiven these people. Subhanallah. Great achievement. And let's get the hajj once at least in our life. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. That all our gham and loss will disappear. That a person says, Allah Ta'ala says that all gone, first rule, maghfira, the person who leaves, he will be forgiven totally straight into Jannah, just like a person passed away and he goes into, into Jannah in paradise. So the question doesn't arise that the person will not get the reward. Then, with regards to eating, Allah says, I will prepare, subhanAllah, say subhanAllah. With regards to eating, Allah says, I will prepare for you, you my guest, so hajiz, Allah says, that the people say, Allah, where will you get food? Allah says, not here, but in Jannah, I'll give you food. So what we realize, the haji, alhamdulillah, that when he passes away, the first thing, the feast he will get, the food, the haji, then he will get it. For this reason, Allah will say that he was my guest, give him that food that I wanted to feed him during Ramadan, subhanAllah. How much we have to be cautious and careful. And what is the great rank of the haji? VIP, very important person, enjoying, eating, drinking, and forgiven upon forgiveness. And Allah's rahmah is descending. The angels come with glad tidings. Whatever the are made, they accept it. Whichever rahmah is asked for, the rahmah comes. And those people who are hajis who have gone, they are like the bubble full of nur. Hazrat Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu raised his hadith. Great hadith, enjoyable hadith. Subhanallah. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu when he said this, when Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu raised this hadith also, and he said that Hazrat ibn Umar, that he was asked from Hazrat ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, that maghfirah, forgiveness for the hajjis, for the people who gone hajj, Allah Ta'ala has announced. Is this just for the hajjis or other people as well? So this is a great point. The Sahaba Karam used to ask to the point, great beneficial questions that would benefit us after many years to come. So the answer should have been that they are hajjis and it's for the hajjis. And this is their mamla, they are guests. And they're sat at the back. They're not listening. And a great response, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, that is this not just for the hajjis, the rahmah of Allah, rather what those people are left behind, even they will get the rahmah, the mercy of Allah. And they are not let free either. So here a beautiful point arises and has been explained. The ulema, the scholars of the deen, that look, that how can it be that we are here and our maghfirah will take place, our forgiveness as well, we'll get maghfirah. So here the question arises, here we need to ask a question that there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim, and me and you listen carefully to this point that we should also include ourselves in this. So we'll need to do an amal, an action to get this, to get to this. So a little bit of a tariqa. And what is that tariqa? That when the moon of Dhul Hajj is witnessed and seen, and those people, mashallah, everyone makes extra effort to do nafal, ibadah, wajib, whatever that person can do. Then everyone's included in that. Then if a person does one action during that time, that from the night, first night of Dhul Hajj, when you see the new moon, and the person should not cut his nails or hair. 
So what does this mean? That this is an imitation of the who? Of the hajjis, subhanallah. So you're imitating the hajjis, say subhanallah, subhanallah. So we're imitating the hajjis. And then the hukum comes, that whoever does this action, doesn't clip the nails and trim the beard, uh, the, the hair. And the person doesn't do this after the first night of Dilhaj. Person now, I think it's the third of Dilhaj, the night, and the person shouldn't cut his nails. Because the haji, when he's in a haram, he doesn't cut the hair or clip the nails or apply fragrance. And all these tests are with the, the, the haji. So Allah Ta'ala says that you have to do these two actions. That close your eyes, remember me. Allah Ta'ala says the other action, that if you don't clip your nails and don't clip, cut your hair. But there's one point here. One point here. That this is not fard or wajib. That all the ulema scholars are agree that this is mustahib. Mustahab. These actions are. This is a great point. That it's not fard or wajib. This action. Yeah, so there's a point that's been explained. That you should imitate the haji. When you imitate the haji. When you look like him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah is such. That because the hajis are beloved of Allah and they are beloved to Allah, Allah Ta'ala is, adores them Allah Ta'ala accepts their du'as and their guests of Allah so when we imitate the haji and follow suit then Allah Ta'ala will love the action so much that Allah will also forgive you and all of us say subhanallah subhanallah so this is a very great and important point we need to understand so here another point has been mentioned by the ulema the, the respected scholars that the haji, because the haji is beloved to Allah, and they've become beloved to Allah, and then to imitate the hajis, Allah Ta'ala says, that I will also forgive you on top of the haji. So tell us, if Allah Ta'ala is saying that, um, imitate my habib, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, subhanallah. If Allah Ta'ala is saying in the Quran, that imitate my nabi, and this includes wajib, mustahab, sunnah, all three actions are ittiba, obedience to the Prophet ﷺ. And all sorts of ittiba come. Some things in the form of wajib or mustahab or different grade that's been given to it. And some things in the form of nafil. And Allah Ta'ala has given us an example to implement all the roles. So, subhanAllah, this was in front at that time. And when a haji, to imitate him, there's so much reward. And tell me that one wajib of the Prophet ﷺ, to fulfill it, what will be the reward, subhanAllah. And how much... This can benefit the people. So those people are are fortunate that in their lives they make the sunnah part of their life. And the person who does this work, for example, the haji is announced once a year, they'll get maghfirah. But if a person who spends his whole life, every second of the day, in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet, that man, that woman, then those people always are announced to that you are forgiven, you are forgiven. Subhanallah. So this is the Habib of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One is the imitation of the Haji, and this is the reward. So if a person imitates the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet of Allah, then imagine the reward he will get. Every second there will be maghfirah, always every moment, the announcement of his maghfirah. Here you have, for example, implemented one sunnah. You'll get maghfirah, maghfirah, maghfirah. So how many sunnahs and how sad and fortunate is that person who can do the work and can do amal on the sunnah? And he shouldn't say this is mustahab or nafil, etc. And he's getting the proof that mustahib, the haji is getting the reward. Then we, we ha- should not leave any action of the Prophet ﷺ. If Allah is giving such a great reward in response to the, the Nabi of Allah, the, the haji, if we imitate the haji, so imagine the reward we'll get if we follow the aql, the nakal, the imitation of the Prophet ﷺ. People say, no, 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 don't get into this. What are the conditions? Is it nafil? Or is it wajib? Why are you doing this? No, no, no. But we say in response, no, this is sunnah. And that's why if a person implements the action due to sunnah, then subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the sunnah to the Prophet ﷺ. And Allah ta'ala loves the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, That if we practice the sunnah, then Allah, there's a very high chance that person will be forgiven. And for such an individual who leaves the wajib sunnahs, this is essential, isn't it? It's important. The person who leaves the wajib sunnahs, that man or that woman, if those actions are wajib and he's rejecting them, then for that person, always Allah Ta'ala's adab is announced to that person. Remember this, remember this. Because there's a great sin that person's implementing. Great sin, big sin. Where there's a big reward being given on implementing the sunnah. Allah Ta'ala announces forgiveness on every footstep. One sunnah, maghfirah, maghfirah during this month. In the same way, such sunnahs that are wajib, and a person rejects them, leaves them, then Allah's ghazab, Allah's uh, wrath comes on that person. And then he's announced for his destination. 
uh, ongoing. So Allah Ta'ala says, you are not ashamed that you are leaving the wajib sunnah for which if it's not prayed, there's adab or punishment. So we, it's sad to say that morning and evening, the ulema, respected scholars explain to us, tell us, they explain to us nicely, alhamdulillah, in wise, in speech, and we, to date, we don't even know what is the wajib sunnah, what's, mustahim, what's the other category of sunnah. Now we don't even know this. The classification. If I say to you, why are you not practice this? No, no, it's not necessary, is it? There's no thawab or thawab. Why do you keep telling us to do this, etc.? Rather, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what we shouldn't even say this, that it's not necessary. The example, I give the example of the haji, that mustahib, you will get due to imitating the haji, forgiveness, the haji is not your relative, he doesn't know you. Tell me, due to the haji, I'm being forgiven because I'm imitating that haji. And I don't know who he is, who is not here. But who doesn't know, subhanallah, that a person knows the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa every leaf, every rock, every stone knows that this is the Habib of Allah. And if this is his status, subhanallah. If a state is such that the Holy Prophet ﷺ was present and the stones were reciting durood, the stones knew the boulders, the rocks and the small pebbles and the, the hand of the Prophet ﷺ, he was holding the stones, they would do durood. And the tree would bow down, it would come swaying left to right. My Nabi is called me, my Nabi, such a Nabi. And we want to be his ummatis. Despite being his ummatis, think that great people who are the hajis, we are ashamed of... Following the sunnah of the Prophet and my brothers, these are the 10 days of Zil Hajj, so we should do tawbah, repent in these 10 days. Those people, if the wajib is not on their face, then bring the wajib, it's wajib to bring that into the life. If the wajib has not come, then don't stay in distress or worry or fikr that, or for example, that without this, no ibadah will be accepted. And these are the fatwas of the ulema, the scholars, that we're rejecting the wajib and earning the displeasure of Allah and His Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the message, hajj. Via the hajj, we be, we get given the instruction here by Allah that be careful that if you leave any son of my Nabi, it's a bad action, it will be not good for you. Allah Ta'ala says, not good ongoing. So these days that come, Ibadat, we had Ramadan, now this month has come, then Muharram will come. May Allah Ta'ala, what Allah Ta'ala is reminding us throughout the whole year is that Allah Ta'ala is refreshing our deen. Refreshing our deen, the deen is not tradition, culture, or let's sacrifice the goat, eat the meat, and have other food, and the people are going to hajj, hajj, hajj. No, look into the heart of that person. What is the message that Allah Ta'ala has given to these people? That how much ma'rifah, look, a small point here. And these points I've explained that, that there's a message of tazkiyah. Allah Ta'ala says, purify your heart in this month. That you are a great individual. Don't we get this message? So we should do this action, shouldn't we? That the impurity that's in our hearts, Allah says, your heart is so big that you start dunya, should do tawaf around you. In terms of accepting you, focus on you. And nowadays, subhanAllah, that even the animals, the buffaloes, the goats come and give salam. Rather, the whole makhluk, the jinnat should know who we are. The whole world, we should know that what is the position of our heart. And I told you, the wali wala, the kashfi had. So here, this is the message of tazkiyah that we get here. And after that, alhamdulillah, good deeds we get. And then we realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He's happy, then how He increases the reward is the same night, but the value of the night is increased. So Allah Ta'ala, to please Allah, we need to make a program in our life. And the third thing we realize is that our link, what is our link with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? SubhanAllah. Never can it be that the mu'min thinks that he can never imagine in his mind that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to displease him. After that, can we please Allah? Not from Salah, not from any Amal, can we please Allah? Nothing is there that can come into our life that we, if we don't make the intention that this will be for the Prophet then Allah Ta'ala says that you cannot succeed. Openly we leave the, sun, uh, the Sunnah, we leave Sharia, and we speak voiceful actions and uh, statements, and we can't understand what position of the deen have we come into. So may Allah Ta'ala give us all understanding. These nights are such. So now let's think two things we're getting, that these ten nights of the Hajj or ten days make these beautiful. Think like this, for example, that the greatest thing that we get in these nights is what? SubhanAllah. And most fortunate are those people, that person, that woman, that man, who tonight on the night of Jummah, this is the first night of Jummah of the Hajjah, and it's the first maybe of this, and after this, this day will not come, I think it will be Eid that will come. That will be the night of Eid, it will be a great night as well, and inshallah, that day will be Adhikr as well, say Subhanallah, Subhanallah, this much tawab we get, so much reward, such a great statement. Such a great mercy of Allah, blessings that Allah Ta'ala sent us here, Subhanallah. So what we see here, is that today what we need to do is to do true tawbah to Allah. Otherwise, remember that 
we have wasted the great days, the opportunities, moments. So now today we have to understand the greatest action for us is that we have to bow to Allah in humility and we should wash our hearts with zamzam. And I've explained that if the two tears come out of the eyes, Allah have made the sins and I have regret remorse, I've left the son of your Habib and Salah and other sins. Please Allah forgive us. And soon as Alhamdulillah the hand is raised, these are the nights of the Hijjah, Allah Ta'ala's promise, subhanAllah, that you raise your hands and I will give you maghfirah, I will give you forgiveness. And that's when a person will succeed, otherwise the same days and nights and we commemorate and celebrate and we leave. Today we're commemorating this and the next day this and the next day less etc. This is not about celebrating, this is about fulfilling the need. Subhanallah. So don't try to make listen to your heart and your nafs. Rather follow the orders of Allah. May Allah give me tawfiq and you all the tawfiq as well. Ameen.